Hi guys, this is Rich with Wild Wonderful Weekends, and this is my fourth video on Map and Compass land navigation. And today we're going to be looking at how to figure out your pace count. Now pace count's important because when you're actually going to be navigating on the path that, that we uh, eventually plan when we're looking at our map and our compass and we're figuring out how we want to get from one place to another, you're going to need to keep track of your pace in a lot of situations so that you know about how far you've traveled along your chosen route. So in the first video we looked at topo maps, in the second video we looked at compasses and how to roughly orient your map to the terrain using a compass, and in the last video we looked at how to precisely orient your map to the terrain, how to locate your position on the, uh, on the map using resection, and so today we're going to look at uh, pace count. And all of these videos are going to build on each other so that we're working up till uh, eventually we can use an actual full uh, exercise where we're going to find our location somewhere and, uh, and navigate from one point to another. So what we're going to do today is we're going to map out a course here. We're going to lay out a course of about 200 feet. That's the distance that I like to use to start to get our pace count. Uh, different people use different things. 200 feet seems to work well for me and what I do. So we're going to use a measuring device, a rolling ruler like this, or you can use a, uh, a laser uh, range finder, whatever you have, but you want to make sure that you actually mark out your distance pretty precisely. So we're going to use 200 feet uh, for what we're doing today. We're going to walk that course at least three times. I'm going to do it four. Uh, you want usually to use as flat a terrain and as straight a terrain as possible. In West Virginia, that's kind of hard to find. So since I've got a little bit of a downhill grade here and an uphill grade, I'm going to actually do this four times and, and get an average of those four. So let's go ahead and mark out our course. Now that the course is marked, we can go ahead and start walking it and counting our paces. Now the way that we're going to count our pace is we're going to count every second step. So I'm going to start on my left foot and then count one when my right foot hits the ground. Left foot hits the ground, I count two when my right foot hits the ground again. So on and so on. And I'm going to try to walk at as natural a pace as possible. And uh, I, I marked the other end of it with a stone that I carried down there so that I know where to stop. Now it's kind of important and it's kind of tricky even, you wouldn't expect it, but what people tend to do as they're approaching the end of the course is they kind of slow down or they shorten their pace. Try not to do that, try to be mindful of just keeping the exact same pace. And if you don't land on an exact count when you get to the end of the course, that's okay. So if it's like, you know, four and a half or even four and a quarter, that's all right, just kind of keep note of that and we're gonna annotate it as we go. So I'm gonna walk down there counting every time my right foot hits the ground and I'm gonna record the number when I get to the end of the course. I'm gonna turn around and walk it back, record the number again, I'm gonna do that four times. Okay, so let's look at calculating a pace count. This course was 200 feet long. My first walk took 36 paces. The second walk took 35 and a half. The third walk took 36 paces, and so did the fourth. We now need to take the average of those recordings, so first we add them up. 36 plus 35 and a half plus 36 plus 36 equals 143.5. And we divide that by four, since that's the number of times I walked the course, and that gives us the average, which is 35.87. Now that's more precision than we need for land navigation, so I'm going to round that to 36. The last step is to divide the course length by the average I just calculated. So 200 divided by 36, which gives me my pace distance of 5.5 feet per pace. And it's a good idea to record this somewhere, put it in your phone, jot it down on a piece of paper or something, so that you always have it handy. Okay, so now that we know our pace, I want to show you another tool that can be handy if you're traveling over a longer distance and you need to keep track of how far you've traveled, but you don't want to keep your pace uh, count in your head the whole time. And in the Army, we call this a ranger cord, and this is about as basic as a ranger cord can be. All I've done is taken a piece of cord and tied some knots on it so that they can slide. Uh, I have an upper area that's kind of shorter and a lower area that's a little longer and has more, more knots on it. And the way that this works, okay, so my, my pace is 5.5. So when I travel 36 paces, I travel 200 feet, right? So now let's say I want to keep track of that as I go. I slide all of these knots to one end, 
and I travel, let's say, 36 paces, and I move one knot down. 36 paces again, two knots down. Now, I know just by looking that I've traveled 400 feet, because each one of those knots represents 200 feet now. And once I keep doing that, and let's say all the knots get down to the bottom, well, now in my upper section, I can slide one of those knots over and reset these knots. So each one of these upper knots, given my pace count and how many I have here, means that I've traveled 1,000 feet, and then I can just start again. That means 200 more feet, 200 more feet, so on and so on, and at any point I can look at my range record and know how far I've traveled. Now, the idea is to have this attached to something so you're not carrying it around. You can have it attached to your clothing and move it around. And instead of knots, you can use beads tied on a cord, anything that works for you, but it's a pretty handy tool. It's, it's, a, it's a neat little thing to have in case you need it. But I hope you liked this video. If you do, please like and subscribe. Um, in the next video, we're gonna actually start plotting a route on a map and talk about how to calculate distance and what your pace will need to be moving towards uh, waypoints along your route to get your final objective. Thanks for watching. I hope you stay tuned for that video.